Breaking news around the clock. One station making history every day. Chicago's talk leader, 89 WLS. Sometimes today, I only read it for Richard Rober's column. I'll be honest, but but I see the fire perks headline. Boy, yeah. the sometimes gone to the big, uh, the big full picture on the on the cover. I love the big the big picture on the front page. It does sell. It says, something's happening. Check it out. Extra extra. Read all about it. Deals that pad firefighter salaries are burning up an $84 million hole in the city budget, says the story. Now, hmm. when you actually go in and start reading the story, they talk about it's got, it, burning money. That's the big uh, that's the big story here. It's a uh, Dan Mihalopoulos story mm-hmm. in the Sun-Times. And they, they, he goes into uh, pay, additional pay that brings the average sa- firefighter salary in the department up to $104,000 a year. Most of the 5,000 members of the department are paid far more than their posted salaries, thanks to a long list of provisions negotiated by their union, it says here. And lucrative extras often are jokingly referred to inside Chicago firehouses as junk pays or funny money. What is this all about? Well, from the union, Tom Ryan. Who's on the Super Celebrity Hotline? Tom, thanks very much for being with us. What's thanks your, for having me, guys. Uh, what is your response to the story in general, though we'll get to some of the specifics? Uh, one word, absurd. Uh, this is, uh, you know, once again, I don't know where things like this come from, but in any walk of life, you are paid to succeed. You are paid as your skills improve, as, as you get more educated. You are usually compensated for that. And somehow this has been twisted and turned to make it look like a money grab by the firefighters and paramedics that serve this city every day. And I think, as I said earlier, it's absurd. Now, let me, let's, there are a couple things in here. There's a, there's a sentence in here that actually even offended me, Tom. I'll be honest with you. And I don't get offended Good, easily. Go ahead. But it did. it did. Now, here's the one. The, uh, there were... One of the payments here, double time pay for holidays, including Flag Day, and they want to point a Flag Day because they're like, "Oh, who well, celebrates course, Flag Day?" Of course, you want to pull up. You don't point out the fact that we also work twenty-four hour shifts on Christmas and Thanksgiving away from our families. That part doesn't sell newspapers. But then, specialty pay for those who have undergone additional training. Now, this is the part that offended me. That's the whole point of this. That yes. that when you get guys and they and they've been doing this cross training with the Chicago Fire Department, the the fire, the the fires, the way that they that they would rage and roar, the fire threat is different now in this era of construction, in this era of fire suppression equipment that's built into houses and offices and stuff than it used to be. And m- the majority, many of your calls are for medical assistance, car accidents, things like that. You want these guys cross-trained medically, which is the primary thing that we're talking about here, so they can assist on stuff like that. Absolutely. This We have become a multifaceted, multidimensional fire department. We have changed with the times. When I came on in 1985, we basically just did and, and was hired as a firefighter. We did, mainly did fire suppression and other things associated with it. Now that things have changed, you know, there, have been, uh, there has been a drop in fires due to a lot of reasons, but emergency medical services are needed mo- now more than ever. So we've gone back to school, many of us later in life, to become better, better educated, to become a more, uh, more highly functional individual, both firefighters and paramedics, and somehow this is a bad thing? I, I just don't understand it. And the other thing that really gets me is after 9-11, the whole game changed. Every fire department on the co- in the country has to be prepared for all things. Nobody has a crystal ball. Nobody know, knows when the next shoe is going to drop. But we already know from th- what happened back in September 11th, it has dropped in this country, and we better be ready to respond to whatever comes our way. You know, that is a fantastic point, Tom, and I think something that a lot of outsiders don't realize as well, and I think we have the finest fire department in the country, absolutely. You I mean, do. Rest assured, you do. But, you know, in, in a, lot of, a lot of these calls, too, I mean, firefighters are, are called into neighborhoods where they should be hailed as heroes and sometimes aren't. It's it's well, dangerous. Not just the it, fire. I'm talking about the, the, the getting, residents. Getting to and from. 
Well, it's it's not it's not an easy job. I mean, things have, have really been, you know, things have really changed over over the years, and our responses have had to change. And once again, we have adapted to the changing environment, and and to, to and to suggest that we're doing it to pad our salaries is just frankly insulting. All right, let me and, ask you this then. Let me because yes. I mean it, uh, I and I, I I happen to have a, a great deal. Of respect, I think both Rich and I do Absolutely. for what you guys do. I've I've uh, been on the receiving end of uh, my family has been on the receiving end of of help from the Chicago Fire Department. I've lived in this town my whole life, so I, I mean, I when you need them, they're there and they are good and they are the best trained. And if you talk, you talk to doctors in this city, and they will tell you about the, the the level of training that Chicago Fire Department paramedics have, and to have two paramedics on an advanced life. Uh, truck that they have now that is no other city in the country has the level of of expertise when you have a medical emergency you're in the best shape you could possibly be in in chicago as opposed to new york or los angeles or any of the other major cities miami any other place because of the amount of training and that's true that is that's not even that's not even up for debate but what i what i think is happening here and i'd like to get your comment i think you're i I think the city is the it the mayor wants to use the press as best as he possibly can. I mean, that's what politicians do to to make a point here in the middle of a negotiation or at the start of a negotiation. They're doing it with the, with the teachers. They're doing it with the firefighters. They're going to do it with the cops. And this is a way of doing it because they put up this website that allows citizens to go up and as well we should but to go up and look at how much money people are making. And that's that, that, that makes people upset when they see it, especially you know, when they lost their jobs. I don't know what the motivation is for that. Personally, I, you know what, they can put up whatever website I know. I know that my members, every one of them, is worth every cent that they get paid. And you know what? When the chips are down and you're, at, you're having your worst day of your life, your baby's choking, your loved one's having a heart attack, your house is on fire, who do you call? You call us. And we're there every single time. And without without uh, without hesitation, and we're there with the fastest response times in the country. You can look that up. And you know what? The first and to- the first and foremost function of government should be to protect its citizens, and that's what we do every day. All right, Tom. Thanks very much. Appreciate it, Tom Thank Ryan you, from right, the thanks, uh, Fire Department Union, Chicago Fire Department Union President. What do you got against Flag Day? I I don't got nothing against right, right, that right now. I, was, I, mean, I was just doing a little gotcha journalism there on you. The point that uh, when did you start becoming anti-flag day? <laughs> <laughs> you communist. Yeah. No, but I mean, I, you know, Tom makes a lot of good I, points. You know, uh, you know, Dan's a terrific reporter, and there's a lot. I, it's not the facts that are in dispute there, but I think it was just, you know, the what Tom and I think some firefighters are taking to be some sort of implication that. They haven't earned that money, and of course, that is not what the intention of the story was. You know, that's it, here's the thing: there's a lot of argument about public employees and their and the benefits that they uh, that they get, and there has been a lot of politics in this to get people all lamped up about oh, you got to be mad at them, you got to mad at. It's very hard for me to ever get mad at cops and firefighters right. yeah. because when there's trouble, they're running toward it. Yep. Right when there's when the bur- when the building is burning, everybody's running out. They're running in, and September 11th, he pointed that out. Mm-hmm. And we have in Chicago has the same problem that New York has. It's a vertical fire department. These guys have to go up those stairs. They got to they got to go yeah. into these buildings. They don't know if they're ever going to come out of. And I'm going to tell you, it's not an easy thing. And this this is that this these are the guys you don't want to tinker with. There's right. all kinds of other people who work for the government and do other kinds of things that. You know, we can we could try to shave around the edges of this is not one of them. Absolutely. All right. Stay right here. Hold on. Don't anybody move.